Okay, this video is um, explaining how to do Fortran through a different compiler, one that's called GFortran, and you can see that I'm on the gfortran.org website. Now, gfortran is generally compiled in a new environment, it's spelled GNU, um, and so in order to find that, Windows, Windows doesn't do that, that's a Linux thing, so if you want to use gfortran for Windows, you have to install a package, um, and they recommend one called MinGW. If you click on that link, it'll direct you to this site um, here. It's a minimalist new environment for Windows, is what that's saying right there. Um, and so, if you come down through here, it explains a lot about it, but we don't really care. We just want to come down to Downloads, and I'll show you how to install this and how to get it up and running and run some code. Now, when you um, go to the downloads, you want to click on that. It'll give it a few seconds because it's uh, the mirror for this link is provided by another company that regulates the bandwidth. And um, save that file. I already have it installed, but I'll go through the installation process again because it can get to be kind of tricky. Um, I'm going to allow it to run. I'll go through here. Just use the prepackaged repositories. Um, that just kind of tells and then accept the license agreement. Here's something that you really want to be careful with. When you're setting up these files, um, Linux doesn't do so well with having spaces in a, in a path name. And so you don't want to put any spaces in there. So I'm putting this directly on the C drive in a folder called MinGW, and that's recommended. Um, it's going to create shortcuts. Now here where it asks me what, what I want to install, I'll I want to do the development toolkit, and I also want to have the compiler suite with all of these in there, particularly the Fortran compiler, which is G-Fortran. Um, so now it gives me a, a list of what's going to be installed and where it will be installed. I go ahead and install that, and it's going to bring up this little window for a little while. Um, while it's doing that, okay, it's finished now. Maybe not while it's doing that, but now that it's done with that, I want to show you um, some other stuff that you, it's, it's worth looking at. On this website, which is still that same one, but I'm just um, in the documentation area now, and, and in the getting started is where I clicked on, it talks about what you need to do to have this set up. Um, you can do the installation uh, through the graphical user interface, which is what we just did. We just installed that. But now it's, it's saying, um, that we also need to, if you come all the way down here, change our environment settings. Um, and this is really important. This is this is where you can really screw up your computer, and so that's why I wanted to make a video of it to make it uh, pretty easy to understand. Now, I'm on Windows Vista, but if I go into, uh, this would be kind of the same for Windows XP or Windows 7. If I come into my computer and I get into, right click that onto properties, and I come to advanced system settings, it's gonna ask me, you know what the heck you're doing, because this is where you can really uh, you can you can brick basically your install of your operating system, and then you'll have to reinstall it. Now on advanced, I come down to environment variables. There's path up here, but if I come down to the system variables, I don't care about just the user variables for me. I want this to work for anybody, so I come down to path here, and if I double click that or click edit, it pops up this little window. Now all of these you don't want to delete any of these, so what I do is I click in there to be sure that I'm not going to wipe anything out, and then I'll hit end on my keyboard. And you can see I have added in here um, this little section there, C drive backslash or forward slash mingw forward slash bin. Um, that's because where this installed, that's where I have all the variables that I need for this, this to be able to work. So if I go into that folder that is the C drive and MinGW, you can see that it has a folder called bin, and this is where it has all the meat and potatoes of that install. You have to point your environment variables to there so it knows that it's allowed to use these. Now I also created another folder in here called pnote, which is programmer's notepad, and here's all of my um, .f95 files. I'm going to delete this application file and we'll rebuild it when we, when we run a code. So now that you can see where I have everything set, and there's a bunch of codes there. I'm going to go to All Programs, find MinGW, and then I'll, get, I'll access the shell. Um, now, if you have your environment variables set up, when, I, when you try to build a code, it will work. Now, the first thing I want to do is 
CD it means change directory and I want to go to my C drive um, forward slash and now you can see that it's got it got me in the C drive if I type in LS it'll give me a list of everything that I have so I want to go CD now min if you hit tab it'll it'll kind of auto auto uh, complete for you sort of like texting um, you can think of texting as a rip off of, of what they used to do in the command line so <coughs> Um, and then I also want to go now to CD P note, and I could have done those all in one command. I could have done CD C drive uh, min G W. Well, and now that I'm already in there, I'm not going to worry about it. But you can see that I'm in here now, and there's all my .f F95 files. Now, if I want to run a Fortran code, I can type G Fortran. And I type the name of it. Let's use test if, which is testing the if statement. It's a little code that I wrote there. Um, and then I'm going to hit minus sign O, not zero, but O for um, open or, or the output. And I want to create an output of the same name, but this time I want it as an executable file. And so this is how you run the code. You compile it. It's just like when we click on run in the Play Doh. Um, in that other compiler. Now if I look at this file um, down here where I have this test if I now have one that's an application, it's an executable. If I double click on that it brings up the window just like it did in um, Play-Doh except this is much faster and it, you'll notice when I finish this it won't say press enter to end or to exit whatever whatever it says in Play-Doh. So some of these codes, if I run some of these where it doesn't stop me um, the you won't even see this screen, it'll just flash on and I'll show you one of those in a minute. Let's say I want to keep running this loop and that's um, and then finally I hit no to end it. Now um, to show you what that was, if I open this with with uh, programmer's notepad, this is what, what that was doing. Um, and you can find this code you can find this code um, on Canvas in the example code section. So <coughs> This one, this one, you can see that it's going to stop because it's going to prompt me to do some things. Particularly right here, it's trying to read in my answer of yes or no. Um, so that's that's what that one's doing. If I take a different one, let's look at the one that's um, output. Now, <coughs> this one in in particular is kind of an interesting code. I'll, I'll expand it. So I'm I'm just writing things to an output file. That's all I'm doing. But I'm also writing things to the screen, the exact same things. This screen, though, because I'll, I don't have anything that's going to stop me from running the code. There's nothing that I do during runtime. I have all the variables assigned in the in the Fortran source code itself. The discriminant's computed. And all it does is spit that out of the screen. So when I compile this one, you're going to see that it just flashes really quickly. And then it'll build an output file. So now what I'll do is I'll come back into uh, the shell script. I'm going to say gfortran output uh, minus o for what output I want this to be and then uh, I'm going to turn this into an exe file and once it's completed that um, then I can come up here and I, when I run this you see it just flashed really quickly but it also created this output file down here if I look at that output file that's exactly what it spit out and so that's what the screen showed it's just um, in order for me, I'd have to code something in there that would do a hold or a pause statement, and we'll talk about that later on. Um, if you want it to act the same way as as it does in um, in Plato, you know the other the other compiler. But when I do this one, it just goes so quickly, you can't really read it. Um, hopefully, you're able to see that on this recording. So anyway, you can exit this with exit command. And um, that's how you run it. Just be sure to be careful when you adjust your environment variables right here. Um, that's where you can do the most damage to your system. So when you have those in, uh, if you don't have those in correctly and you try to run a code that's, you, you try to um, run one that's that, that you turned into an executable, it'll give you an error. And that's just going to tell you that, um, that your environment variables aren't set up correctly. So. That should be uh, all that you need to know in order to get started with MinGW on Windows and uh, run some code with the G4 trend. There's a lot of um, examples on this website as well that are going to um, 
that are going to help kind of explain how G-Fortran works and you can find more information on the G-Fortran website as well but I think this MinGW one's probably a little bit nicer to navigate through. So that being said, um, that's all you need to know.